In 2021, The Hive was a roller coaster of some very high highs and some not so great lows. We had stuff like the Sonic event in that month in October and November where there was a new big update literally every week, but then there were also other points where so much new stuff was being worked on that we didn't actually get any new content for months on end. I guess what I can say is that 2021 was certainly a year to remember for The Hive, and what better way to remember that year than with a blog post from The Hive themselves recapping 2021 and looking forward to their plans for this year, 2022. This video is going to be pretty self-explanatory with me just going over the blog post and giving my thoughts and takes on it, but I'll also be going over my original predictions on what I thought the Hive might be like in 2021, but also sharing my thoughts on what I think the Hive might have in store for us in 2022. Interested? Let's get started. Alright, so at the beginning of last year, I made a video titled, What Can You Expect From The Hive In 2021? It was basically just a speculation video talking about some of the updates and events that I thought we'd see on the server in that year, and out of the five topics that I talked about in that video, I got two of them right. The first of them was swarms, which I said, I realistically do think that it's probably gonna be late 2021 when we actually see the swarms update. Now, if you've been keeping up with what's being said recently, swarms has basically been delayed indefinitely. There's no release date, and there's no indication that it's going to come out anytime soon. The next prediction in my video, however, was that the Hive Java server was going to shut down. Now, I realized that this wasn't actually that much of a prediction since the Hive themselves said that the Java server was shutting down that year, but I still figured I'd put that in because it was a notable event in the history of the server. My third prediction in that video was that the Hive's next game mode, Mixed Arcade, would end up releasing that year. I even said that it would probably be one of the updates that happens earlier in the year because we hadn't had a new game mode in so long. I think you can see how that prediction ended up. So I was wrong. Very wrong about that one, in fact. But I wasn't that wrong about my fourth prediction in that video, which was that replay mode would end up releasing in 2021. While yes, it did release later in the year, I still feel like it's a really solid product for how long it took to release. Now, my fifth and final prediction in that video was that the Hive would continue to grow in basically every way. In player count, in content creation, all of that sort of stuff. Keep in mind that this video was made in late January of 2021, when the Hive was literally experiencing their highest player counts ever. I think the record was like 61,000 players online at a time or something. I said that the Hive would continue to grow and possibly hit 70 or 80,000 concurrent players at some point during the year, and it never did. There's a lot of outside factors to that though, which I've talked about in other videos, and it's not just because the Hive died as a lot of people like to say. I'd recommend going and watching the video in the top right if you want to know more about this. But either way, as you can see, I went 2 for 5 in my 2021 predictions video. It's a losing record, I know, but let's see what the Hive has to say about their year in review and their play plans for the new year. Like I said at the beginning, they released a blog post going over all of this, and if you want to read along with me, there'll be a link in the description. You might honestly want to read along just because I'm not going to read everything word for word in the blog post. Either way, it starts off with them basically saying that they're going to go over 2021 and everything that happened in it regarding the server, and discussing their plans looking forward for 2022. They begin the 2021 recap talking about their Hive Sonic event. They say that they had been working on it in complete secrecy, which I can 100% confirm since I heard literally nothing about it until the announcement came out and everyone else heard about it as well. They also mentioned the hub takeover, the minigames, and the interactive live event, and discussed that while the Sonic event was really cool, it also helped the server develop a lot of new things that they can use in the future like custom blocks, sounds, and animations. Overall, I think the Sonic event was a big success for the Hive even if it was only around for a couple of weeks. Next, the blog post moves into the seasonal updates the Hive had throughout the year. There was the New Year hub, the Lunar New Year hub, the Easter hub and update, the Summer hub, the Autumn hub, hub, the Halloween hub and its update, and finally the Winter hub and the Winter Fest that came along with it. With these seasonal updates, we sometimes had games like Block Drop, Ghost Invasion, and Snow Wars, and even some really advanced hub hunts like the Halloween and Winter hunts. Moving on though, the Hive also reflects on Replay and its release. They initially made it for moderation purposes so that they could go back into games and look at things if they need to, but also realized that it could have some very creative uses that the community would probably be able to use it for. Finally, the last thing regarding 2021 in this blog post is all of the game updates. Survival games got a really big update in February, changing a lot about how the game is played. Skywars got a lot of updates this year, ranging from new items to new maps to even new game modes. Treasure Wars got two big updates this year, one cosmetic update bringing the total levels to 100, and another one that brought prestiging new items, new maps, and more to the game. Hide and Seek got some new levels, bringing it up to 50, and they also got some new maps and other changes. And finally, custom servers got some huge changes from being pretty 
pretty bare bones earlier in the year, to being fully fledged now with lots of options for customizability. Overall, I think for as inconsistent as updates were this year, the ones that we did get were pretty solid. I know quite a lot of it was temporary content, and I know a lot of people want more permanent content on the server. Well, in the first paragraph of looking forward to 2022, the Hive directly addresses that. They say that they're shifting towards a hard focus on permanent content. However, in the paragraph below, they have a disclaimer. I'm gonna read it out in full so that maybe some viewers and some content creators that might have missed it initially will hear it. Before you read on, please note that we aren't committing to public release dates for any of the following. They reflect our internal timelines, but we will always continue to only release content we deem as good and finished. Those two sentences are just something to keep in mind when it comes to Hive updates. Either way, looking at the updates that they have in store for this year, the first one that they mention is their arcade game mode. I'm sure that you've probably heard about it at this point, and we all know that it's one that they've been working on for a while, but they say that it's got game modes in it that'll appeal to all players. Previous games that we've seen on the Hive, like Ground Wars and Block Drop, will also be included in it. I personally hope that we'll see some modified versions of the Sonic minigames in it. I'm not 100% sure if they'd be able to use those, though. They also say that they're still working on in-game reporting, and that when it's out, it'll be tied in with the replay system. This is another thing that they've said they've been working on for a while, and it's definitely something that'll be very useful on the server. However, in the same paragraph, they also say that they're changing how matchmaking and regions on the server work. Basically, if you join the Hive at a relatively dead hour in your region, you'll be put into games on another region so that you'll get to play faster, and queue times will be improved overall for everyone. Now, this sounds very similar to how Cubecraft does their matchmaking, and my experience with it has been mixed. There's some upsides to it, but there's also some downsides. I guess it's more just one big downside, which is ping. Obviously, it affects some people more than others, but I would rather play on 50 ping on my home region than 100 ping or 200 ping on regions halfway across the world. At the same time, though, I realize that this will be overall good for the server. Like they say, you really shouldn't join dead lobbies anymore, because you'll be playing with people from other regions and games will start quicker as a result. There's also the plus of keeping platform-based matchmaking on for longer, which means that mobile players will play with mobile players more often, and PC players should stick with PC players most of the time. Once again, upsides and downsides. In the next couple paragraphs, they also mention that they're working on a complete social system overhaul, and that they're constantly working on their anti-cheat to make it better and better. Now finally, the last thing that they're working on at the moment is pets and mounts. They included a sneak peek image of one of the mounts being worked on at the moment, and they also say that the QB pet will be available on January 15th. However, you can only get this pet if you purchase the QB plush online. They plan on releasing more pets as the year goes on, though. Now, while the pet update pretty much wraps up the blog post, I feel like it would only be fitting for me to make some predictions for what I think 2022 might be like for the Hive. No, this isn't going to take 10 minutes like the 2021 video, but I still think it would be cool to look back on in a year. Keep in mind, though, that all of this is speculation and none of it's guaranteed or confirmed to be happening. Just because Potato Pie says it doesn't automatically mean that it's going to happen. Starting it off, though, their arcade game mode. My guess is almost certainly that it's going to release this year, but the real question is when. I would think maybe sometime in the early middle of the year, when a lot of the player base is getting out of school and has more time to play on the server. Assuming there aren't any other huge non-seasonal events that the Hive has this year, I would bet that the arcade game mode is probably going to be looked back on as the highway of the year. The release of it's going to be huge, I feel like most people will probably be able to find something fun in it, and I feel like the overall reaction from most people will be pretty positive. There's also going to be a lot of smaller updates this year, like in-game reporting and like the new social system, and I don't really think there's much of a timeline at all as to when these are actually going to release. Still, I think these updates are going to be overwhelmingly positive for the server, because while they aren't related to the games directly, they should make the games and the server more fun overall. I know some people might be curious about the possibility of a second new game releasing at some point this year, but I feel like if we haven't seen or heard anything about it yet, it's a very unlikely chance. That said, you never really know. The Sonic update was announced just a few weeks before it released, and it had been worked on for months at that point. Now, as for the Hive's player counts in the coming year, I feel like it's gonna stay relatively stagnant. Unless the entire world goes on lockdown again, or some other huge event on the server happens, I just don't really see all that much happening this year that's gonna cause a huge growth in player count. If I'm being honest though, I really do hope we see a growth in player count, because that's really good for content creation if so. Either way, people like Ignacio Blades have proven that there's a way larger Hive viewer base than we initially thought, and I'm sure more content creators will figure that out and absolutely blow up in the year of 2022. Regardless, the next year for the Hive is definitely going to be interesting. I'm sure that there will be plenty of good moments throughout the year, but there's definitely going to be some times where it's not as good, which the Hive themselves alluded to at the end of their blog, saying that we may
may not hear from them for a while since they're working on updates. I just hope that the Hive community can stay together this year. We've gone through tough times, we're going through tough times, but I think this next year has the potential to be awesome for everyone on the server. I'm certainly excited to see what it has to offer, and I hope you guys are as well. If you want to know how I've been doing personally recently, I'd recommend going and watching the video that just showed up on screen. Regardless, thank you all for watching, and I will see you guys in the next video. Peace out.